Well, today I want to share with you all about my new book, The Elegant and Edible Landscape. But first, I want to talk about a few other things that have really resonated with me recently, and I just want to thank you guys. Um, this, these past few weeks, we have done videos that, or I should say vlogs, because what Stuart and I do is very much in the realm of vlogs. We try to keep it very real. There is some editing, but not a lot of editing. And in other words, it enables us to give you real world, real time, real footage of things that are going on in our lives. And also that I have really discovered are going on your, in yours as well. So we have deviated a bit from gardening videos of late, partly because I think they're topics we're all thinking about, and I know certainly I am, but also because I don't think they're that detached from gardening. I, my brand is basically living a garden-inspired life, and all of these things to me are topics that that I look at through a gardening lens, how I can have more time to work out in the gardening, in, in the garden, uh, metaphors to life, things that the garden has taught me. And so to me, any topic really in, in some respect is a garden related topic, which leads me to the fact that we have so many new followers who have found us because of these topics. And I wanna say welcome to all of you. It is so fun to have you along. We have, I think, Stuart is nodding his head. We have a really lively community here and I hope you'll become a part of it. And one of the benefits of this lively community is that not only do I hope you can glean some information from me on gardening and other topics, but I promise you if you read the comments and you comment and you get to know some of the other people who watch this vlog, there is so much information and so much wisdom there. And I Believe me, I get a lot more from you guys than you ever get from me. And recently, some of the topics have, I think, uh, stimulated a lot of stories about our shared vulnerabilities and how our lives are not perfect and how we all, in our common humanity, are always struggling. No one's life is perfect. I don't care how edited the photos are on Instagram or Stuart's beautiful photos that he edited for this book. It's one of the reasons that I'm so obsessed sometimes with showing you my uglies and showing you my, my character flaws and things that I struggle with because we all struggle with them. And I think it's important to, if you're gonna say yes to life, you say yes to all of it, the good stuff and the bad stuff. And so it, I really wanna give a heartfelt shout out and thank you to so many of you who shared what you are going through, whether it's COVID, the death of a loved one, the death of a pet, um, someone who's struggling with problems their children are having, all of those touch my heart in ways you can't imagine. And I, I am honored. I'm really honored that you share those stories with me because it may look like I have the perfect little life, but I promise you it is messy, it is ugly, and it is certainly not perfect. And I have had my fair share of real heartache over, over my many, many years as I age. So I just wanna sh really thank you guys for sharing your stories with me because they inspire me. And if you read one another's comments, I think they will inspire you as well. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. So now to my kind of protracted commercial about my book. In one of my recent videos, I talked about how there can be unexpected bad things that happen in our life that really uh, gobble smack us and seem to come out of nowhere. But I'm, I'm also trying to look for those really unexpected, wonderful things that happen as well. And I shared one of those in my previous video. But another wonderful and unexpected thing that happened during COVID when we really couldn't go too many places and certainly we couldn't travel was that I was approached uh, by a publisher to write a book. And the book was about my, primarily my protege, but also the creation, the evolution, and the ongoing care of my garden. And I was so honored that they 
that they would want me to write it. Um, it had a, a really nice review in Publishers Weekly, and that made me feel good because I really felt like I was a pretender writing this book. I, I'm not a formal gardener, and I'm not a formal writer, so the fact that someone wanted me to put words down on a page was an unexpected joy. And it was also, quite frankly, an unexpected joy to me that I was able to get it done because I don't consider myself to be a very disciplined person. And, and I guess most importantly, it's a real act of love. And I hope that you will, of course, here's, here's my ask, my sales pitch. If you haven't already ordered it, that's my question of the day. Have you ordered it, pre-ordered it? You can pre-order it off of Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, you can order it in the UK. You can order it from a number of different places. And over time, I'll try to share all of the different sources where you can find it. But quite frankly, if you just Google it, it will come up with a source. And of course, please visit your independent local bookstore uh, to get your copy and ask them to carry it. If it is a little bit outside of your budget, I understand that completely. I always, as a matter of course, try to check my, a book that I'm interested in out of my local library first before it becomes a a permanent partner in my gardening book library. And if that's the case with you, then please just ask your local library to carry it because uh, they're very good about responding to those kinds of requests. Um, I'm going to digress a little bit too because I've gotten so many questions about who all works with us. And certainly you guys know Stuart. A lot of you, especially those that are new to this to this vlog, want to know who is he? Is he my husband? No, he is not my husband. And my standard response, Stuart is chuckling, is that he is my photographer, he is my business partner, and he's my good, good buddy. And I would also say that he, I kind of feel like he's a member of my family, and I think he would say the same. So someone else asked, what, why is his mother here a lot? Well, his mother, whom we fondly call Susu, is also kind of a member of our team. She has a real job as a librarian, and she kind of helps keep us in line. Would you say that, Stuart? She sometimes helps when we're shooting things. She uh, will tell me when my hair looks funky because it often does because of my calyx. She will, she just kind of helps us um, on the set. And then I have another person who helps me. Her name is Carrie Wilson. By the way, she, I have known her for years. She's a neighbor and way, way, way a long time ago when this whole pilgrimage started, she was the person who shot my videos on Instagram, which kind of led to all of this. She is also, um, not only, uh, I believe she's a master gardener, but more importantly, she is working on a, on a second degree in horticulture through OSU Tech. I call her and refer to her, to her as the bug whisperer, and she has, she has contributed to my book. She contributes her wealth of knowledge and her good spirit and, and her organizational skills to what to what we do here. Um, something coming up, as I said, this is a vlog and, and Stuart and I try to make it as in the moment and as updated and as current as we possibly can. Because of that, one of my favorite expressions is that something's greatest strength is its greatest weakness. And our greatest strength is that I think we are fairly contemporaneous, we're spontaneous, we try to do these in real time, we try to get them up quickly, we try to stay on a certain schedule so that we post every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's our greatest strength. Our weakness is we get them up so fast and we're sometimes under such, um, in such a hurry to get them up in a timely way that we don't carefully edit them. Um, and Stuart will acknowledge that his spelling skills aren't, aren't the best. This recent one had a couple of misspelled words in it. And so what we're going to do is, is have is we're gonna really take the time. Quite frankly, one of the reasons that we don't really watch them or edit them a lot is because Stuart and I get so sick of ourselves by the time we have filmed them and come up, come up with these ideas. We can't bear to watch ourselves again one more time. But we're gonna have a third party who is gonna go through and, and, and not 
oh, again, we're not going to overly edit these. The, these are true vlogs, video diaries of what's going on in the garden and in our lives. But we will have someone who will try to catch those misspelled words and things because when Stuart and I see them, we just kind of groan because we know it was our, our uh, premature posting them that led to some of those problems. The other thing is, is just a big ask, and that is uh, as we get this this pattern down we may be posting them a little bit later so please just be aware of that and obviously there ever is evergreen content that lives on and on and you can go back and watch any of them at any time including those that for those of you that are new answer a lot of the questions that you may have so phew, there you go there is a bunch of, of housekeeping items i've been meaning to address off of my list so if you are interested in getting this book, someone asked me if it was a coffee table book, and I would say yes, it's probably a small coffee table book. It's got a textured exterior, which was very important to me, and it's got embossed and um, kind of engraved title work on it which I think lends to its kind of elegant feel. And that was the vibe that we were trying to capture. Um, it is, if you pre-order it now and send me your address, you can send me an email to support at lindavotter.com. Then I will send you one of two book plates that you can put in, in your book that I will hand sign that will show that you can, that it comes from your garden library. So if you lend a book to someone, it will come back to you. And I've got a couple versions of this that Carrie will send out to you that I will sign. So if you're in an area that won't be at one of my book signings, you'll have my signature on it and I will sign this for you. So, so there you go. If you pre-order it, um, Stuart obviously puts the links here and if it, it, it will be made available soon. So I got my first copy two days ago. It wasn't supposed to be theoretically and officially released until March 8th. So if you have pre-ordered one, you may get it sooner rather than later. And I do hope that if you have a gardener in your life, you will consider it as a Valentine's Day gift because I think it would be really special. Um, and we are now putting together locations from where I, where I will do book signings and I'll keep you abreast of that. So there you go. But I do want to share some of the contents of it. Um, the words really come from my heart. This is one of the beautiful images. Most of the images in here were taken by Stuart. The, the really wonderful ones were taken by Stuart. The ones that are semi-wonderful mostly were taken by me um, because a lot of these I wanted to capture the, capture the history of this garden. So some of these images are as much as 30 years old and contain some kind of before and afters. This is just one of the beautiful images that's in the book. It's one of my favorite ones. And I also love it because this is what in the next three months my garden hopefully will look like or some some version of this with this many tulips. And I would invite any of you who want to see it in person to drive by when the tulips are in bloom. I'll obviously be showing them on this vlog and I'll let you know where I'm located so you can drive by and say hello and see them. Um, another picture which was completely unexpected that is one of my favorites. Is, can you see it there? Move the card, okay. Partly because it's one of my husband's favorites is I think it kind of captures the joy that I have in my garden in any season. Stuart and I just on a lark when it was snowing, we went out and took a bunch of pictures and it turns out that this is one of my favorite ones because I do think it kind of captures my joy and my love of the garden and the fact that we can love it in any time, in any season and at any age. And so I love that one. But there's, more, there's a lot more information in here as I said, I try to share the real world. There's images in here of, of catastrophic apocalyptic weather events that we've had and how we've had to recover from them. Most importantly, I think what it does is something that I really try to do and that is deconstruct my thought process because I am not formally trained. I'm not a formal garden designer. I'm just a pretend gardener and garden designer. But it does, I think, share the methodological way that I looked at creating this garden and my points of inspiration, aspiration, and motivation. So if you want to peek into how my brain works 
and how I came up with the ideas for my garden and how I continue to, to maintain it, then by all means, this book will tell you exactly that. And I also share lots of resources and different people that have inspired me. I share some of the gardening books that have inspired me. Um, there's just all sorts of different information. And I explained how I did it basically myself. 99% of the digging, the planting, the design, uh, the gritty work, 99% of it I did myself. Now I'll be honest, right now I'm not doing as much of that and I have helpers for the first time that are helping me in my garden because I've got other great loves like writing now and creating all sorts of different kinds of media that I'm attending to. And so because of that, I do have some help in my garden. And case in point, there's lots of images of me working in the garden to demonstrate that it is actually me. And, um, but again, there's lots of deconstruction. Stuart's laughing because <laughs> he knows how insecure I am about that because I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm just this, woman who who just has a pretty garden um, and everybody else does the work and I'm self-conscious about that aren't I Stuart I want people to know that I really do it and I, I've made so many mistakes that I've shared with you guys that most of you who follow this vlog know that definitely yeah she really does it herself and when she does it she she fesses up so these are just some of the images that are in here of my garden and other gardens that are not like mine so you can get inspiration if it doesn't match your gardening style mine is very much an English gardening style if it doesn't match your style, this is a perfect example of another friend of mine, Kamala, uh, who, who shared her garden with me. And that was so kind of her to do that. This is one that we have kind of worked on together. And she kindly let me share images of her garden, as did lots of my friends. And there's just lots of really beautiful images of my garden, both in, 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 its, in its glory and also when it doesn't look so great. With, I think, lots of really great hands-on projects, ideas, accessible tips that I don't care if you are just gardening on a balcony and you have nothing but a container garden, if you are courtyard gardening, if you are gardening on your back 40 and you have lots of land to garden in. I don't care what part of the world you garden in. I hope and I intended that this book would speak to all of you because my situation wasn't always the same and I started gardening in a much more modest environment than I garden in right now. We all have to start somewhere and this, is a, this shares my pilgrimage of where I started, where I ended up and how I came to the point in my life now where in various different forms, I am sharing it with you. And so there you go. There's my very long-winded, I guess, sales pitch to you guys. It's, it is an act of love and I'm really very, very happy that so many of you have pre-ordered it. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and, I, and, I, and probably one of the nicest unexpected things, and I will end on this note, one of the nicest unexpected things that happened to me was, and you can look it up, you can Google it, uh, but, but was the fact that A, it was, it was previewed by Publishers Weekly because they don't preview all books. And secondly, that they said that my, my writing was as delectable as the images themselves. And I can't tell you what that did for the confidence of a pretend author. And I love it also right now that on this beautiful but chilly winter day in January, that there is, there is a tiny little bee. <laughs> that is hovering around Stuart that is a testimonial to his ability to hold the camera steady and put up with other kinds of, of stimuli around him at the same time. And were Carrie here, she would share with you exactly what kind of bee it was. So thanks to you guys, thanks to all of the pollinators out there that make this garden happy. And I hope you'll consider looking at uh, reserving this book at your library, uh, buying it or gifting it to someone. So there you go. Stuart, have I forgotten anything? 
And Stuart will, will, I think, validate the fact that this truly was an act of love and, and frustration and a little bit of stress. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, no guts, no glory, no, no gain without pain. So there you guys, you guys go. Have a wonderful Sunday, and thank you for listening to my protracted sales pitch. Well, if you've held on this long, here is my outfit of the day. My sunglasses are Armani Exchange. I got these at Nordstrom Rack. My earrings, aren't these fun, you guys? I just bought these yesterday at my favorite little boutique, Eden, in the Paseo. I love them, and they're perfect, I think, for the lead up to Valentine's Day. They would make a great Valentine's Day present. Um, I'll look to see if there's something where I can provide you guys a link for those of you that don't live in the area. Uh, they also inspired the rest of my ensemble, which is kind of color blocked with this wonderful chartreuse color and red. And that's my fashion question of the day. Do you guys ever color block and pair two really bright, not necessarily related colors together? So definitely answer that below. And if so, what colors do you like to pair with one another? Which leads me to my sweater, which is I got on, uh, on sale at Anthropology a number of years years ago. My blouse is just a cotton blouse from Forever 21. And by the way, if you guys want uh, an inexpensive source for cotton blouses like this that are highly pressed, then Forever 21 is a good, pretty inexpensive place to find them. And they are, and Forever 21s are pretty ubiquitous. You can find them in lots of different places. Um, my shawl, I have had for years, some of you may recognize it because it's also the throw that I keep on my office chair in my office to keep me warm, but it's the perfect chartreuse color match. I got this off off of Amazon years ago. It's one of those blanket scarves. Uh, my jeans are one of my new favorite pairs. They are favorite pair or favorite pair of jeans? I'm not sure if you guys, if you, yeah, if you guys know that answer. Um, but I got these off of Amazon not long ago. They are stretched, they're high-waisted, and they're imminently comfortable and they will be great for working out in the yard and my flats i also got off of amazon and they're kind of an off brand i can't remember alexandra fisher or something like that but i also got these off of amazon they're kind of a faux suede they weren't real expensive so again i can wear them out in the garden when i'm doing light gardening work my bracelets are an ensemble of just different disparate kinds of things say it along with me you guys so many of you have watched me uh before show my bracelets this delicate little gold chain say it now belonged to my mother-in-law this slide bracelet belonged to my second mother. These are just some inexpensive bangles that my sister Meg got me, I believe, and this is just another inexpensive bangle that I found somewhere. But in their totality, I think it, it is kind of a, a fun play of textures and things of that nature. Oh, and the fabric one I got on one of our trips to Mexico. So there you go. There's my ensemble of the day.